the final game of the Carolina Nike Classic, and it gives us a top 15 matchup here in Chapel Hill, North Carolina. Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining us on ACC Network Extra. Alongside the former Tar Heel, Alex Gomsia, I'm Kyle Stroud. A star-studded matchup tonight, Alex. Three players named to the Herman Watt list in the preseason. Cal Jennings for UCF, the first one. That's right, Kyle. One of those stars, Cal Jennings, number three forward for the UCF Knights. He had the second most goals in the NCAA last year. He was a first-team All-American. He's on the Matt Herman Trophy watch list, like you mentioned, this year, and he'll look to be a threat all night for the Tar Heel back line. For North Carolina, it's Mauricio Pineda in the midfield. Mauricio Pineda, number two captain for the Tar Heels, also on the Mac Furman Trophy watch list. He's a two-way midfielder who is very strong defensively, but also very good going forward from that deep midfield position. He had five goals last year, four assists for a career high. And the third one, Lou, getting the first start tonight for UCF since his knee injury took him out of the year last season. It's the Knights and the Tar Heels on ACC Network Extra. Chapel Hill is a brand new facility for the Tar Heels, Carolina Soccer and Lacrosse Stadium. Quick turnaround for both of these teams after a disappointing start to the season. North Carolina took on Creighton, went down 2 0 at halftime, but able to get a couple of goals. Ended up drawing in their season opener for the Knights. They were over in Winston Salem, dropped a 2 1 game to Wake Forest. So both teams, top 15, big hopes for the end of the year, but still looking for win number one as we take a look at the starting lineups. We'll start with the home team, the North Carolina Tar Heels, and Jack Scahan. Yeah, Kyle, one of the main players, one of the key players for tonight would be Jack Scahan, number eight. He's on the right-hand side. He's got blistering acceleration. He's very good 1v1, and he'll be key to unlock the UCF Knights defense tonight. We told you the Knights have some firepower up top with a couple of preseason Herman Trophy watch list members, but in goal, Yannick Uttel, named preseason conference goalkeeper of the year. And Alex, as a defender, you know you've got to have the offense, but you've also got to have some defense to keep the ball out of the net. That's right, Kyle. Big, big, big thing is having defense. I think that wins the championships, that's the saying, right? <laughs> that's what they say. We'll see how things go here tonight for North Carolina and UCF. Take a look at the head coach for the Knights. Going to get back to the NCAA tournament in just his third year. They were there last year. Haven't made back-to-back -back appearances, though, since 2011. He's got a strong roster out there. And Carlos Samuano, the head coach for the Tar Heels, not just looking to get back to the postseason, but looking to get over that hump and bring home his second national championship in his tenure here at the head coach for the Tar Heels. A little bit of a change for North Carolina from their opening game on Friday night, Alex Rose will be in there starting up top. Maybe trying to find a little bit of a spark earlier in the game. They went down 2 0 at halftime. It was the second half push where North Carolina got their goals. Showed a lot of character to come back from that. Tar Heels start off with possession. This is Jelani Peters down in the corner. Good defense there by Dean as he's able to take possession away. North Carolina, a team that likes to play possession. They're not going to take too many chances. They're going to be really crisp with the passes, try and find that opening. Beautiful night for soccer here in Chapel Hill. You can see right away the Tar Heels are trying to press them out of the back. Rose putting some pressure there on the keeper Uttel as the Knights will try and get their offense going. 2 1 that, loss for them to Wake Forest. Sorry, God, I think one of the main things that UCF needs to do is be able to play out of that pressure because once you break those lines, you'll be able to find more space up top for guys like Kyle Jennings. It was a 2 1 loss for them against Wake Forest, who is preseason number four in the country. And that one goal came late. It was in the 90th minute, so a 2 nothing game for the majority of the time against them. Back and forth in the midfield between these two. Hasn't been long for you since you've been out on that pitch in a North Carolina uniform. 
How's it feel being up here on the other side of things? To be honest, Kyle, it feels a bit it feels a bit weird. I would have loved to obviously play in this in this amazing stadium, um, but I, you know I'm just grateful that I had the opportunity to play for the Heels. When your starter on the back line was Alex, went to a couple of college cups with the Tar Heels, now playing for NCFC. Someone's able to get a foot on that and sends it out of bounds. Knights will get down towards the attacking third before they slow things up and play it back towards midfield. Good by Rose. There's Pineda. Lucio Pineda, a senior for the Tar Heels. One of those players, like yourself, who play for so long, it just seems like they've been around forever. Four-year player now for Carlos. Yeah, it comes with experience. When you first come in as a freshman, you don't really understand what the what it means to be a Tar Heel, but, but after you get some experience and a guy like Mauricio Pineda, he's totally bought into the philosophy and to our core values, so that's why he's been he's been successful so far. Pressure from Carolina gonna force a turnover. Pineda ahead to Peters. Peters to the right foot looking to connect. There's Skahan. Good job coming out of the box by Uttal, and he got there just in time. Tar Heels almost got themselves a 1-0 lead. Very tough challenge from the UCF Knight defender. Let's see, Jack Skahan is through right there. A little bit of a push. I don't think it's a penalty, but could have been. Instead of a penalty, a corner kick for North Carolina. Would have been harsh in my opinion. Perhalter plays it in near post. Got it to the head of Peters. Could not get that one on frame. Pineda gives Chase near side. It'll be the last one to touch it. Burhalter, freshman out of Westerville, Ohio. Part of the number one recruiting class brought in again by Carlos Samuano and his staff. Solace plays it wide. Skate hand with two defenders, gonna slow things up. Pass is a little bit off the mark here for UCF. They're able to keep possession and then turn it over in the midfield again though. A little sloppy start here from the, the Knights, Alex. Yeah, but you can see right away, as soon as the Knights try to win it, Kyle Jennings is making these runs straight through the defense to try to catch the Tar Heel defense sleeping. So is that danger from him up top. Saw the stat, 20 goals for him last year. Almost half of them came in just three games. When he scores, he scores in bunches. He registered three hat tricks through the regular season last year. Picked up right where he left off. One of the exhibitions for the Knights. Here he had is. a hat trick. Working far side, trying to beat two Tar Heel defenders. Gets a shot off. That one is going to be pushed aside by Smear, but a corner kick coming for the Knights. There you go. Perfect example. He's a dangerous player, and if you give him too much time and space, he'll punish you. There you go. Shift. Chops it up. Then chops it out again or gets lucky with the deflection and then gets a shot off. Doesn't need much of a window to let one rip. The senior from Roswell, Georgia. See if they target him off this corner kick. Seems like he's bleeding a little. Ball played in back post. Rose gonna help clear it out for Carolina. Mentioned it, a little bit of blood from Jennings after that shot that he took. Try to hide that one from the referee, right? Yeah, he come off like he doesn't want to come off the pitch. Totally understandable. Alex Smear, the sophomore keeper for North Carolina, sat last year. Some good experience behind a veteran in James Pyle. How much does that help a young player being able to sit last year you were a teammate with him and just be able to pick the mind of a player like Pyle who was in his senior year and had proven that he had what it takes to 
be a good Division One goalkeeper. It, it's crucial when you when you see guys that have experience. For example, when I came in as a freshman, I had a back line of Jonathan Campbell, Jordan McCrary, Colton Storm, guys that were already established. Walker Hume, for example. Um, and it, if you can just work with them day in, day out, pick their brain and, and play alongside them, you get better as a player, and I benefited tremendously from that. And I know Alex Amir has benefited from, from working with James. Each team with a shot. Each keeper able to push it aside. A lot of play in the midfield between the two. There's another pass off the mark from the Knights. Good pressure by the Targets so far. UCF picked to win the AAC for the second year in a row. North Carolina picked for the fourth year in a row to win the ACC. And I talked a little bit about this before we got on air, though. For teams that get into the tournament and get national seeds, just winning that conference isn't enough. You've got bigger goals and bigger aspirations. The ball played over top for Rose. And the flag up on the opposite side of the field. Good, though, from Alex Rose trying to run off the shoulder of the defender. Keeps them honest. Left-footed cross. Nobody on the other end of it for the Knights as the Tar Heels will clear it out. It was close, though. Kelly able to win possession near side. Kelly, the senior, one of the few veterans that are left on that back line for North Carolina, a team that gave up just 10 goals all of last year. Two in the first half of game one this season, though. That's right, and Jeremy's not a natural defender. Keep that in mind. He is he is a number 10 winger who he, he's one of the most versatile players I've ever played with. He can play anywhere on the pitch, even goalkeeper, perhaps, if you, if you, if you make him. <laughs> if you're in a bind, he can throw on if you really need tonight him. the green jersey. But, yeah, like I said, in the, ba in the back line, it was new to him, and he's done a really, really good job to improve his defensive game. Here's Jack Skahan. Skahan gets a shot off just over the crossbar. Good strike, though, from the right side. Here's Jack. Like I said in the pregame, he gets fortunate on the deflection, but then he pushes it. He's got a really hard shot. just has to keep it on frame. Oh, maybe the keeper got a touch there. If he got a touch, Carolina doesn't get the corner off of it. Referee missed it. UCF going to look to build through the back. Get up field quickly. Ball played into the middle. Nice one touch. Here's a shot. That one just over the crossbar. Jennings with another opportunity. Cal Jennings once again. Very dangerous. Yep. Good touch. Quickly the Knights get that offense going too. Yeah. A bit too much of a gap between the center backs in my opinion. Definitely need to step to him to make sure he doesn't get that shot off. Make sure the cover is good behind the, the guy who steps as well. First time these two teams have met in quite some time. 2006, actually the last time. North Carolina came away one nothing winners. Here's another chance for the heels. Skahan with the cross. Attell able to dive and push that one away. He can move the ball in too. Alex Rose making a run. Good job by right, Kelly to track back. He'll help to start the counter attack. Working towards the middle of the field. He's going to be fouled by Perez. Take another look. Yeah, Jackson. Good ball by Bill Halter. Over the top, Jack Skahan reads him for pace, whips it, and he's looking for Rosie. Just a bit too close to the keeper there. Bill Halter, the freshman, along with Kelly, ready to play this one in North Carolina. What are you looking for off of this set piece for the heels? Well, you got to be first to the ball, and that's what anyone will tell you. So hopefully they look for that constant back post. Here he is. Heads that one towards frame. 
Rose gave a run, but couldn't get there. And Uttel puts it back into play quickly, looking for Jennings. I believe that was Kelly who got a foot on it to get it away from Jennings and back to his keeper, Smear. Another foul committed by Perez as Pineda goes down. I think anytime the heels have a free kick, they're going to look for Matt Constant that back post. He's 6'6", wins pretty much every header, and he'll look to knock it back down for another rudder coming across that can just poke it in. 6'6", easily the biggest player on either roster, 6'2". For a couple of players for the Knights, including the keeper Uttel. Pineda loses that one just outside of the 18. Aguilera battling with Vivi, and the Tar Heels come away with possession. First time since 06 these two have met. It's the seventh time overall, North Carolina holding the 4 2 advantage. Two wins for the Knights actually came way back in the beginning of this series. 1981 was the first game played. The Knights won 1 0. And a few years later, 1986, a 2 1 overtime win. Well, Peters with a good step up there. All side flag was up though as Rose tried to play it. Between 81 and 88, these two played five times, and there was a long break before that 06 game. Another long break in the series until today. Nice ball through. Rose had it on the left foot, lost his footing, no whistle from the referee. Yanis Learman on the defense. And with the hard challenge, it seemed clean. We'll see on the replay. Let's take a look. Good ball by Jack Scahan. Splits the defense. And then, yeah, that's a clean challenge. Rose oh. put into the lineup today, was not in the starting lineup on Friday, and immediately he has paid off dividends. Not in a goal, but getting that offense going, looking for some opportunities. Streaking down the near side, Vivi going to gather this one in. The cross from Vivi. All the way to the top of the 18. Shot! That one is going to go wide. That was dangerously close from the UCF Knights. They look dangerous right now. Barry Atabu with the shot for the Knights. Despite the fact that they lost to Wake Forest, they actually outshot the Demon Deacons in their game Friday night. It was a 5-0 difference in shots in the first half and an 8-5 overall. That's right, both teams are looking for their first win of the season. They're eager to get it, so they're, you're going to see some good attacking football here. Soccer, should I say. Works both ways. Called the That's same right. thing, and it just depends on where you want to go. And to be honest, you're the pro. You can call it what you want. That's right. Peters plays this one back. Tar Heels going to put on the brakes. A little bit under hit by Bill Halter. Looking for Mauricio Pineda. It's interesting talking with Carlos prior to this game. A couple of freshmen in the lineup, and I asked him about it. And I'm sure this isn't surprising at all to you, having played for the man, but his answer when I asked about freshmen being in the lineup and if there was any pause was, I don't look at them that way. It's whoever the best player is going to be, that's who's going to be out there. That's right. I think it's the right way to look at things. I mean, he, he doesn't care where you're from, if you, if you, how old you are. It doesn't matter. If you're ready, you're ready. And I think that's, that's a great approach. with the ball in found the head of Jennings smear with good positioning though that's right Jennings once again getting off the back sh left shoulder of Blake Malone getting Malone, the header off. one of those other freshmen that are in the starting lineup and on that play alone you've got a guy like Jennings you know he can score what does the freshman need to do to make sure he stays right there with Jennings so the header can't get taken? You got to keep an eye on where the ball is and where Jennings is at the same time. So keep your body kind of 
open so you can see both. So if they do play it behind you, you can run and head it out. But if they play it in front, you can also get in front of them and clear the ball out. Ball played for Villa Lobos. Instead, uh, Pineda able to take it away for the heels. Good ball by Aguilera. Looking for Peters. Maybe looking for some help. Finds it in Sorokin. Go the way of the Tar Heels. Again, the freshman Burhalter. Looks like he's going to play the free kick, and now he'll actually hand it off to Pineda. This probably the field will probably play short. We'll have enough guys in the box to keep the ball rolling, keep possession. Pineda led the way offensively for Carolina in their season opener against Creighton. Six shots, four of them were on goal. And he registered one of the two goals for the Tar Heels. He is in the middle of the field. Good ball movement. Kelly puts on the brakes. Finds Peters. Peters with the cross. Immediately headed out by the Knights. Good little spell for Carolina here. Skahan from the far side trying to beat the defender. Couldn't get around the corner but kept possession. Plays a low one in. There you see that acceleration from Jack Skahan. Good defending though by the UCF Knight defense. Not easy to keep up with him. I've had my fair share of training sessions. <laughs> Teams, a national seed in last year's NCAA tournament, both with an early exit. It's interesting in college because you can bring back a large amount of your team, but you lose just one or two players, and those players happen to be starters and seniors. It really can affect your team. For Carolina, it's on the defensive side of things. For it UCF, it's in the midfield. That's right. It definitely can, but any good program knows that it doesn't matter. I was talking to Coach Carlos Sawano the other day, and he mentioned it doesn't matter who is not here. It's about who is here. And that's how you rebuild the team. Every team, every every year you'll lose some, some seniors or some key players, but that just means someone else has to step up. Hard tackle from behind sends the freshman Burhalter to the turf. It'll be a foul against the Knights. Four show, uh, shots so far for UCF, two for Carolina. Neither side's been able to break through. Always fun to see these early season matchups against two top rated teams because it's a potential preview for an NCAA tournament game. And if it happens to be, you then can go back and look at this one and see how much teams have improved and grown throughout the year. Aguilera going to bring it near side. Malone to Peters. Not a lot of pressure right now being put on by the Knights. They're just sort of half pressing with their two forwards and then keeping two blocks of four behind. They don't want to get played in behind right now. So hopefully Carolina will be, for their sake, will bad giveaway there. Here comes, Here Jennings. comes Jennings down the middle of the field. Jennings able to get by one defender. Constant, the freshman. Good defending by Constant. Sorry, the Excuse junior. Me, junior. Yeah. He and Malone, the freshmen who were left back. Pineda trying to switch fields. Yeah, 
Akshas will have to get used to right back position. He's not too familiar with that last year. We played a back three, a different, little bit of a different formation this year around with the back four. For Mark Salas out there at right back, number 27. How big of a transition and, and of a change is that for a player to make? It's different if, you, if you're used to, I mean, I, when I play right back, it's, it's, a, it's a lot more running, to be honest. Uh, when, you're, when you're central, you can see the game better. Uh, you, you can go either left or right with the ball. When you're out there on the right or the left, there's a touchline right there. So if you take a bad touch one way, then it's out of bounds. So they can, teams usually force you towards the touchline to force you out of bounds. And if you're not, you know, accustomed to that, then, oof. Rose by Rosie. almost able to take it away from the keeper, Utzel. Switch. Here's Vivi for the Knights. Going to cross that one, looking for Jennings, making a run right down the middle of the box. But he was shadowed by a Tar Heel defender. Yeah, Constant put his body there. Just put Cal Jennings out of the picture. Good defending. Alex Rose nearly able to take this one right off the foot of the night keeper. Maybe a little too lackadaisical in the penalty area there. Oh, it's got confidence for sure. Could be punished though. Rosie got close there, Alex Rose got close. Junior keeper Yannick Uttel from Munich, Germany. AAC preseason goalkeeper of the season. Here he is again with the chop. Not surprised his favorite goalkeeper is Manuel Neuer from Bayern Munich. He's got to give the coach heart palpitations on the sideline, though. Just play that ball out. Get it away from the goal. Definitely. Here come the Knights. Top of the 18, Villa Lobos chip that one in. And it'll be sent out by Salas. Again, Salas on defense. This cross towards the back post. No choice for Kelly but to play it out of bounds. It'll give the Knights a corner kick. It'll be their second of the game. Same side of the field as the last one for UCF. It'll be Andres Hernandez. Hernandez, the sophomore from San Jose, Costa Rica. Long drive into the box. Sneer able to get up above the crowd and punch it out. Volley back in by the Knights. Jennings, Smear, ball still loose. Smear with a second effort. And the whistle going to blow from the referee as Jennings and Smear both tried to play that one. They're always going to give it to the uh, goalkeeper. That's right. He had possession of the ball. Kyle Jennings comes in, you can see the replay. Header flick, and then Smear does get possession right here. That gets kicked out by Cal Jennings. Doesn't give up on a play, though. That's for sure. Pineda just clears that one past midfield. Rose with some good hustles, gonna win it for Carolina. Finds the foot of Scahan. The right footed shot for Scahan's gonna go wide. Great counter attack there by the Heels. Good work by Alex Rose. Jack Scahan just had a good touch to set him up. We'll see on the replay. Here's Alex Rose, wins it, plays him through with his left foot, falls down. Jack Scahan, decent first touch, but then he kind of scuffs the shot, looking for that far post there. First sub of the game as Lucas Del Rosario, the junior from Durham, comes in. No goals last year for Del Rosario, but did pick up an assist off the bench. Smear being pressured here by Jennings. Gets it off and back out towards midfield. There's a foul on the far side of the field. Carlos Samuano not afraid to go deep into his bench. 
Played nine subs in their opening game on Friday night against Creighton. That's more than usual for sure. Giving guys an opportunity. And I've got to guess that some of that is trying to figure out what the right combination early in a season is. You're trying to replace some players like yourself and James Pyle who were seniors that graduated. Smear nearly took that one over. Does as Jennings gets it, plays it out wide. Shot is going to sail. From Barry there. Boo. Yeah, Hatabio Berry from France. Hatabio Berry from Paris, France. Kyle Jennings beats Raul. Raul gets a touch there, but it comes to Berry. Left foot over the bar. Can't. Needs to get over that, so it goes on target. Dangerous, crafty player, though. It was his second opportunity of the game. Hasn't been able to get one on frame. Fifth shot for UCF so far. We were talking about the rotations is also due to the intensity of the schedule too. You got games Friday, then Sunday, you're definitely gonna make some subs. Quick turnaround and not a lot of preseason to really build up the legs and the lungs. And not to mention easy. Friday, they also played two overtime periods. So it wasn't just 90. They had to play a full 110 on Friday night. That's right. Good work on the line there. Kelly gets the touch. It comes across midfield. Had Del Rosario to the left, just didn't see him. But he'll draw the foul against the Knights. There's an example of Jeremy's technical and dribbling ability. He comes from a left back spot. It's, it's, it's really hard to mark, actually, for the other teams because he comes deep from these, from these right back and left back spots, and it, it's, he splits lines and dribbles the cross that allows other players to run through, and he can play through balls. Obviously very good on the ball, too. Rosario to Pineda. He'll play it back. Malone being pressured by Perez. Peters plays it into space. Del Rosario. Back to Peters. That one just off the mark, though. A little too much pace. Here's Aguilera gathering it in. Far side for Scahan. Scahan plays one near post and the defense is going to get to that one and it'll be headed out by Hernandez. Carolina will have their second corner of the half. Another decent cross from Jack Scahan. He has the ability to whip those in with curl. Looks like Scahan will play this corner in for the Tar Heels. Senior from Memphis, Ten uh, Tennessee. Let's we'll see if we look for that cross again. Number six. Second on the team last year with seven goals. Liner towards the back post. There's Constant, the header, up over the crossbar, though, and out of bounds. There he is again. You see Jack looking for him. He drives the ball up, and when you do that, it allows the taller player to typically get to the ball first. Matt Constant, very strong in there. Having that tall presence that you can really pick out in the box seems to be something that Carlos really has favored in his tenure here at Carolina. There's a bad turnover. Pineda in some space. Plays it wide for Peters. Peters into the 18, back to the right foot, crosses it. The header! Oh, Once again, Alex Rose with the header. Jelani Peters with the cross, almost identical to the Friday game against Creighton. Second goal of the season for Alex Rose as North Carolina breaks through first. Here's Mauricio with the chop, sends the UCF player flying. Here's Jelani Peters, cuts in with the cross, and there's Rosie back post. Really difficult header. Gets it off really well, puts himself to the ground. Very good direction on that Heather. Well done, Alex Rose. 1 0 Tar Heels. That's a 6 1 frame that's got to get real low to get to that one. It would have been much easier to just put your left foot down there, but you know what? <laughs> that works. He's not afraid to put his head down there. 
he's been working on his heading. I remember he came in as a freshman, and he he wasn't that. Despite his his tall stature, he wasn't he wasn't the greatest in the air. But he's been working on it. Credit to him. First time North Carolina has had the lead this season. VV going to track this one down near side. Plays it for Perez. Perez goes for the far post, but off the mark. Dangerous curl from Louis Perez there. The midfielder from France. A dangerous player last year for the Knights. Unfortunately for them, though, went down with a knee injury in the first conference tournament game and missed the rest of the season. Didn't get the start in the game against Wake Forest on Friday. I'm guessing that was probably because you're still getting the legs back and coming off a knee injury. They just didn't want to risk it. Definitely the AAC midfielder of the year for a reason. Missed here, uh, clear that played off of Rose. Del Rosario to Peters. Peters with another cross. This one loose, and the keeper, Uttel, will go and grab it out of the air. Once again, Jelani Peters is looking for Alex Rose in the box. It seems to be a good combination for the Tar Heels right now. You're not the winningest active coach in D1. If you're not pushing the right buttons, and Carlos Samuano pushing the right buttons, putting Alex Rose in the starting lineup tonight. Peter's the only one credited with an assist on that goal. Good defending there by Mark Salas against the tricky Barry there. Pulled some step, over, step overs and shimmies, but you just watch the ball, want it back. Final game of the Carolina Nike Classic. Appreciate you joining us on a gorgeous evening here in Chapel Hill. Alex Combs, see you alongside me. I'm Kyle Straub. Second game of the season for both of these teams, and they're both looking for win number one. I know it probably wasn't mentioned prior to the game, but neither program is going to want to start off with the first two games of the year and come up with a goose egg in the win column. Yeah, you need to get that first win out of your first two games. Feel better about how the season's going. For North Carolina, their next game will be against Harvard. They'll get a few days off before they take them on. It'll be right back here. Doesn't get much easier, though, for UCF as they really are challenging themselves in the beginning of the year. They'll play their first home game on the 6th, but it'll be against the Nittany Lions of Penn State. They have a very tough opening schedule, don't they? Playing Wake Forest, then UNC Chapel Hill, Penn State. All very, very good teams. And I think for a team like UCF and UNC, you're looking at two different schedules because of the conferences you play in. For North Carolina, they don't have to load up with a whole bunch of top-heavy non-conference games. You get into ACC play, and you're playing somebody who's probably going to be in the tournament every single week. That's right. For UCF, that's not quite the case. They're probably the only team out of their conference who will end up getting to the NCAA tournament unless somebody upsets them in that conference tournament. That's right, so these first few games are definitely important to their RPI and their ranking. A lot of the ACC teams are ranked pretty highly in the top 100, top 50 every year. SMU has upset them in each of the last two AAC tournaments. All taken away from Del Rosario deep in the corner. Mario's making it hard for that ball to get cleared out. Rose took it away. Pineda serves it to Skahan. He looks to go wide. Hernandez got a piece of it, and the Knights are going to take possession back. Good defending by Hernandez there. He saw that. He anticipated that Jack Skahan was going to go to his right. Just stuck his foot out, won the ball back. Vivi all alone on the near side for the Knights, but they just cannot get the ball to this near side. Instead, they turn it over again. Skahan. Going to go by one defender into the 18, back to the top of the box. Pineda couldn't get a good strike on it. Kelly battling with Perez. Perez goes down, no whistle. Peters with the cross.
again, North Carolina making it difficult. UCF really having some trouble clearing that ball away. Dean will play it back to Tell. get our first sub for the Knights tonight. Schmalbach. The freshman from Italy. Looking he'll to make an impact. He'll replace Louis Perez, who we mentioned a little while ago, coming back from a knee injury. So not a surprise that he's the first one to come off. A lot of international players on this roster for the Knights. Was something else that you and I talked a little bit about beforehand with a team like UCF as they build down the near side. Schmalbach able to get around one defender. In the 18, shot off Smear. Couldn't handle the rebound. Defense will send it out. It'll be a corner kick. And there's an immediate impact from the freshman from Italy. Here we see... Chops Raul, Raul slips up, gets his shot off, Samir hits it back towards him, cleared out by Malone. The point I was going to make is sometimes for the smaller schools, you've got to find that talent pool elsewhere. His coaching staff has gone to overseas to find it. Ball crossed, header, still loose, trickled and danced on that crossbar before Del Rosario finally able to clear it. Very close to being the opening goal for the Knights. I think Mauricio Pineda was hurt during the play. Perhaps a head-to-head. -head. Down in the goal for Carolina. Would be a huge loss for the Tar Heels. Senior midfielder, we've told you about the accolades. Preseason All-American named to the Herman Trophy watch list. It's just a strike to a team, though, when you see a leader down on the ground. That's right. Hopefully he's okay. Eight shots for the Knights so far in this first half. Just five for Carolina, but thanks to the header from Alex Rose, Tar Heels with the one nothing lead. Senior Mauricio Pineda being attended to right now by the training staff for Carolina. Take another look at the replay and see exactly if we can find it, what happened to Pineda. Right there, yeah, you can see left side of his head, number six, I believe that is Learman. Got a piece of him right there. He was trying to clear the head ball out, yeah. Mm -hmm. You can see him grab the top back part of the head right away. Yeah. Seems to be walking, so hopefully he's okay and able to return. They'll All check smiles, him out right? on the sideline. <laughs> it's got to be a scary thing, that initial hit to the head the ringing, the yes. disorientation, and then once you gather yourself. Funny you mentioned that in the game a couple months ago against uh, Nashville in the USL Championship. I actually broke my jaw. Uh, I got an elbow, too. That sounds like a fun time. Yeah, it sounds like a fun time. <laughs> wasn't great. I was out for a month, um, had surgery, but, you know, I'm back now. And that initial, when you initially get hit around around that area, it's, it, it's, it's not the best feeling, that's for sure. Well, glad the broken jaw has healed. Obviously not affecting you today. No, I'm, I'm good to go now. As long as it's not a concussion, it can, it can be fixed pretty much immediately. Mm -hmm. Looks like Pineda is going to come right back into the game for Carolina. Good news for the heels. Looks like they'll make a couple subs too. He indeed does come right back on. About seven minutes to go here in this first half. one nothing lead for the Tar Heels. Oh, 
Goal scored all the way back in the 31st minute by Alex Rose, his second of the season. Peters trying to work down the near side. Two night defenders on him. Peters able to split them. He's going to go down, but he's going to draw the whistle. Very good. 1v1 attacking from Jelani Peters there. Let's take a look. He comes across and he splits them both with his touch with the outside of his right foot. Boom. Foul there. Good work by Peters. Peters came to Carolina and there was a lot of excitement about his potential. And that's the kind of play that people were really excited about. And they're, they're hoping here in Carolina that the senior can break through this season. And put it all together. Scahan will play the free ball in. Going to the back post. Too much bend on that one. He almost scored that himself though. Looked to be a cross initially, but it almost found its way on its own to the top right corner. A couple of subs for the Tar Heels. Cameron Fisher, the freshman from Palo Alto, California, comes in. Replace Aguilera and Jack Scahan. UCF going to counter with a sub of their own. Richard Amon, the senior out of Ghana, comes on. He'll give Jennings a break before the half. Get an extra couple of minutes to recover. Here comes Peters for the Tar Heels. Good defense down the near side by Dean. Peters plays it back to Pineda. Didn't quite get underneath that one, and it's sent out by the Knight defense. Good step there by Constant, I believe it was. Yep. Martin Salas, the senior out of Dallas, Texas, the other Tar Heel sub. It's a nice mix on this team for Carlos Samuano of youth and experience. Del Rosario and Rose trying to match up on the give and go there. Pineda going to send it near side. There's Peters with Dean in front of him. Kelly, back post. Freshman Cameron Johnson had the hand up. He was looking for something to serve one in. Barry was wide open on that counterattack. They could find the switch. The energy level for Rose, even though it may be the opening weekend, doesn't look like it is taking a hit at all. Still putting pressure on the keeper. Heyman loses his footing after he chests that one down. He's come back from the summer seeming like he's, he's, in, he's in top shape. I know he's done a lot of work this summer, so it's definitely showing right now. now. How tough at the beginning of the year is it to get into game shape? You can do as much training as you want, but actually being out there and playing in a game is not something that you can simulate. That's exactly right. You, you can't you can't simulate the game, and you can do as much fitness as you want, and you can you can increase your your physical fitness. But there's something about the game mentally that, that is just different. So you need to play a lot of games to get match fit, along with complementing your physical fitness. It comes with both. Good turn by Sork in there. With Jennings on the bench, it, it seems like the the night offense, as far as the counterattack, that ball being played over the top, that threat is kind of taken away. Definitely expect to see him back for the second half, though. Yeah. 
It's an advantage that you get in college. You can re-enter the game. It's not like the pros where you come out and your day is done. Smart coaches take advantage of it. Get your players a couple extra rest, like both of these coaches have done here before this half. Also, the clock counts down, which is different. Whenever you hear that 10 seconds left, <laughs> everything goes crazy. <laughs> We scored a few goals in the last 10 seconds in my time here. Gianluca Arcangeli comes into the game. Red shirt freshman out of Brazil. With just about a minute to go, how much do you expect the Knights to really try and push and get an equalizer? versus playing just to make sure you don't go down another goal. Oh, I fully expect them, not just in the next minute, but the, the second half to come out flying because they, they really need to push for for that first goal and and, and look for that second because you know, the two losses back-to-back -back is, is not something they're, they're going to be happy with. Arcangeli plays it near side. Dean. Lobos. Cross, and that is going to be headed out by the Tar Heels. Good job by Salas to get to it. Just about 30 seconds to go as Peters tries to send it back out towards midfield. Kelly gets this one down in the corner. Just going to try and shield it away from the defender. Good help for the Knights. Dean trying to cross that one. Pineda got in the way, not once, but twice. And the Knights going to run out of time before they can get an opportunity here at the end of the half. Quick thought, one nothing lead, though, for Carolina. I thought Carolina was the better team uh, in the first half. However, the UCF Knights did have a couple of chances where they could have put the ball in the back of the net. I think the differentiator, differentiator right now is, is the work rate and the pressing and the control of the game that UNC is able to implement. The best exemplified, first and foremost, by up top, Alex Rose. He's been working his tail off to win the ball back, and he's won it, I think, two or three times and played it out to Jack Scahan for, for an open breakaway. He's been working his tail off, and he is the reason North Carolina has got the halftime lead. Jelani Peters served it right to his head, and he was able to finish things off. Carolina with a 1-0 lead as we go to the half here in Chapel Hill. You can watch what happens in your life, and you go back to the things that meant the most to you. You can feel it in the air, you feel it in your bones. I cherish each moment because it goes by fast. This place is different. Can't quite explain it. Not a collection of campuses, a set of values. To me, it's three things. Where you started, where you are, and where you're going to be. Knowledge is power. Effort breeds success. Unity is strength. My love is stronger than yours. It's stronger than yours. It's stronger than yours. For 66 years, these principles have provided the foundation for records to be broken. Get out there and play Florida State baseball. Rivalries grow and legacies to be made in arenas of all kinds. Good evening, I'm Ted Koppel, and this is Nightline. They arrive with promise. K-R-Z-Y-C-E-W-S. They leave as proof. Ham, Palmer, Primetime, Jordan. Heisman winners. Boston College Lamar Jackson, University of Louisville. First round draft picks. Zion Williamson from Duke University. World Cup victors. National champions. An excellence in sports is paralleled by every other pursuit. Presidents. Nobel Prize recipients. 
on Space Voyagers. We move through the world like shooting stars across the sky. The ACC's preeminence is real. Virginia is the national champion. Not a concept. I love every minute I spent at Duke. Connected. If you smell what the Canes are cooking. From the open fields of Tobacco Road to the top of a golden dome. Many colors. One home. One place to see it all. There's only two colors, garnet and gold. It's a Cairns thing, they won't understand. We are the Fighting Irish. Go Eagle! Go Tiger! Go Deep! Yeah! A route from Carolina over Duke, please. Let's go Panthers! Welcome to HTC Network. Appreciate you joining us here on ACC Network Extra. A 1-0 lead for the Tar Heels. We're at halftime here in Chapel Hill. A lot of opportunities for both teams, but the Tar Heels, the only one able to break through in the first half. Alex Rose with the head of the sixth-ranked home Tar Heels, the 1-0 lead. North Carolina picked to win the ACC Yet again, Alex, you were there for four years. This is your first year away. You guys want it every year there. They're picked to win it again, trying to keep that tradition going. How tough is it to do? The ACC is, for me, the toughest conference out there. I mean, look at that. Virginia, Duke, Virginia Tech, Notre Dame, Pittsburgh. Those are all very, very difficult games. In my opinion, you put Notre Dame or Pittsburgh in another conference, they could win the whole thing. So it, it's very competitive. And it doesn't take long to get into ACC play these days with the expanded conference. Just a couple of games down the road, September 13th, Virginia Tech, and hey look, an ACT team that's ranked, surprise, surprise. Yeah, that'll be a tough one. Virginia Tech, Davidson, Notre Dame, they're, they're tough ones, you have to respect each game if you're a player. UCF also favored to win their conference in the AAC. They did so last year, but as I mentioned in the first half, SMU, who got one vote, has upset them in the conference tournament two years in a row. They've got a really tough non-conference schedule. How important is it to make sure they win the conference because they've tested themselves so much? And you can see it gets no easier. Wake Forest, North Carolina, they welcome in Penn State. You've got South Carolina this month as well. And that's why this game is so important for them. I, I really expect them to fully come out in the second half and, and, and really push for, for a couple of goals here because look at that schedule. That's not an easy schedule. See how they change, what adjustments are made, and what the Knights can do. The Tar Heels right now sitting pretty with a 1-0 lead. Kyle Straub and Alex Gomes see you with you here on ACC Network Extra. Final game of the Carolina Nike Classic and the Tar Heels with the 1-0 lead at the half. But for UCF though, Alex, Cal Jennings had some really good looks early in that first half. He's definitely knocking on the door. Let's take a look at these highlights. Here he is. Chop gets fortunate with the deflection, but he somehow gets to shut off from a really tight angle. Here we go again. Look at his movement. He knows where the defenders are. He's looking at where the space is, tries to curl it on the left side. And then once again here, last one. Gets his header off, off the shoulder of Blake Malone. We'll see if he can get some success in the second half for North Carolina. Carolina and Jack Scahan had some opportunities early. He got three shots off, but it was finally Alex Rose who broke through for him. We talked about the importance of Jack Scahan on this game, and he, he, he has showed up today just over the top with that shot. Once again, he gets it played over the top. He's looking for Alex Rose. He curls it just a bit too close to the keeper there. And then here's the goal. Jelani Peters for Alex Rose. Very, very good header. Knocks it into the right side of the net. 1-0 Carolina. Despite the Tar Heels with the lead, UCF actually outshot North Carolina 8-5 in that first half. 
Three saves, though, made by the sophomore Alex Smear in goal. The defense looked up to the task in the first half for Carolina. Big change from the first game where they allowed two first half goals to the Creighton Blue Jays on Friday night. Definitely an improvement. They'll be happy with that. If you're the Knights, what kind of adjustments are made? What are you looking to do? Not turn it over like they do there. Shot from distance, kept down. Carolina was nearly through there with the, the giveaway in the back by the Knights. Cameron Fisher, who came on for the last six minutes of the second half when he took that shot for the Tar Heels. Peters with the right foot, looking back post, headed back towards the frame, bicycle kick. Great chance there for the Tar Heels. Tiago Herrera, the acrobatic bicycle kick. Here's Jelani, he's been cutting in a lot, trying to chip it back post to whoever's there. There we go, bicycle kick, execution, needs a little bit of work, but the intention was right. If he pulls that off, what a goal. Herrera did not play in the first half. Started on Friday for Carolina. Well, back to the question I was going to ask is, what does UF's, uh, UCF change to try and get that equalizer or get out in front here in this second half? I think they'll definitely try to expose um, the back line here. Look, watch, he's running through. Mark and Jelly with a long run. Tripped up and the whistle. Going to go against the freshman, Blake Malone. They had decent chances in the first half. It's just a matter of can they weather the storm of Carolina? And then can they can they keep some more possession? Can they get the ball out wide? Can they get dangerous crosses in? Can they make uh, runs that break through the, the lines of the defense from Carolina? A little bit surprised, but a yellow card issued to Blake Malone after that tackle. Just the third foul committed by the Tar Heels in this game. Ten of them by UCF in the first half. Give the Knights a nice opportunity here in the first couple of minutes of this second 45. We'll see what Yoni Sorokin has to say about this. It looked like it was the freshman Malone who got ahead on that one for Carolina, and then it'll be sent out of bounds. Mendoza will throw this in for UCF. And Jelly, who made that long run, drew the penalty. Collision back there between Salas and Barry, I believe. Let's take a look at the throw in. Salas comes hard. Barry just backs up into him. Fell right on that left leg. Awkward collision there between the two. Seemed to be okay, though. Getting ready to say, though, Arcangeli left in here in the second half, coming off the bench in the first half, scored the only goal for UCF against Wake Forest, came in the 90th minute of that match. It shows you they definitely have belief to go all the way until the 90th minute. They won't give up. I don't think they'll be too worried that Carolina's up right now as long as they can get some good chances to get back in this game. Jonathan Jimenez, the freshman out of Connecticut, also out there for the Tar Heels to start this second half. He did not see the field in the first half. Rara takes that one away. Ball played for Peters. A miscommunication there by the Tar Heels. Ball was played a little bit too hard by Jelani Peters. Looking for the overlap of Jeremy Kelly there. You see a lot of that Jelani likes to drive. Jelani Peters likes to drive in with his right foot, cut in. And while he's doing that, you'll see Jeremy Kelly come on the backside for an overlap.
Just as a note, Cal Jennings came off for the last five plus minutes of that first half. Not out there to start the second half. Didn't see any type of injury, so you think this is just a strategy move by UCF? I initially thought it was an injury, but perhaps it is a strategy move. Not sure what the strategy is, but... <laughs> Only the bench knows. My mind kind of went to, because it's early season, maybe you give him a couple extra minutes so that he can go the last 40, 35 minutes and not get tired legs. A little bit of a penalty shot there. Jelani Peters dribbling through. See the replay. Here he comes again. He splits two, gets through, touches it around. Little bit of contact there. Small. Referee decides not to call it. Learman across midfield for the Knights. Runs into a couple of Tar Heel players. Pineda gonna take a shot from distance and this is on frame. Off the crossbar. What a strike by Pineda. What a goal that would have been. Sees the keeper off his line and hits the crossbar. What vision to even recognize that that was a shot he could take from the position on the field he was at. Great pressure by Martin Salas there high up the field. Wins a free kick for his team. Second yellow card of this half. One went to Blake Malone. This one against UCF. Take another look at this laser. Wins the ball back. Sees the key off his line. Pings it perfectly with that backspin. Hits the bar. What a goal that would have been. Yellow card issued to Yoki Sorokin. Sorokin turned in, see on his right shoulder that Salas was coming in hard, so he has to commit that foul. Chance for the Tar Heels here. So close to the penalty area here for Carolina. Do you try and play this one towards a post and get somebody making a run, or do you just try and strike this one and get it through that wall? I think 95% of the time you, from this distance you are going for goal. Unless you're doing some sort of trick play with someone at the back post, but not the best of shots there by Herrera. Straight into the wall. Midfield, Villa Lobos loses it. Kelly gonna put on the brakes and play it back to his defense. Three early quick shots, excuse me, four for Carolina here in this second half. It's been a strong start from them. You've been in the locker room with Car uh, Carlos Samuano. What do you think he said to the team? Got a one nothing lead, you're at home. What was that conversation like? So oftentimes, you th just because you're 1-0 up, you think that uh, the opposition's gonna come out and they're gonna come out stronger, but you have to have that mentality of no, you're the ones, even though you're 1-0 up, that you're gonna come out even stronger than the first half. So it's almost, a, almost to be the aggressor. Hunt, not be hunted. Offside flag up, Fisher. Got caught creeping behind that defense. Looking to play this one over top of the Tar Heel defense. And Munn making the run. Recovery there from Matt Constant was not easy. Take a look at this tackle. Amon Speedy coming through. Constant just gets a foot to it. Very good defending again. Dean played that one into space. Nobody on the other end of it, though. Feels like Carolina has made an adjustment from the first 15 to 20 minutes of that first half where 
Cal Jennings got four shots off, and it looked like UCF was pushing a little more on offense. They were going to break through. Since then, it's been Carolina the ones who have been the aggressor. Yeah, they've definitely settled into the game after a few first nervy plays, or good plays if you're, if you're UCF Knight. Now they're, dom they're dominating possession a bit more. Tabu a little shaken up after that one. Pineda plays it far side for Kelly. Try the near side, Salas. Good ball by Kelly. Flicks it on for Peters. Peters looking to get into the 18. The cross just behind Kelly. Tabu takes it across midfield. Salas going to play a bag. Carolina just looking to spread out that defense right now with the Knights. They're getting good numbers around second balls too, so when they do play a long ball, they Prepared can win the Salas. second ball. Salas going to go wide. Too much pace on that one, and Fisher is not going to be able to track it down. Maybe a little too unselfish there. Would you have rather liked to have seen Salas take the shot? I think he should have. I'm going to tell him after the game that he should have. <laughs> Scored a Sports Center top 10 goal. Pineda down. Doesn't look too good. Pineda down in the first half after a collision. Able to come right back into the game. This one, though, didn't see a collision. Went down on his own and looked like he was reaching towards that left leg. Yeah, initially I thought it was his head again, but it seems to be something on his leg. Maybe the back of the knee. Pineda paced the Tar Heel offense in their season opener. Six shots, scored a goal. Does not have one here today, but has made a difference in the midfield for Carolina. For a few years now, yeah. He has the ability. He's, very, he's naturally a defender, which is surprising to most. He actually played center back a lot growing up with, uh, with the U U17 national team. So he, he has that defensive presence, but he's also very, very good on the ball, and he has the ability to score goals, as he's shown. Tar Heel coaching staff getting a couple of subs ready to come into the game. There are actually a couple of starters. Skahan, number eight, and Raul Aguilera, number 28 for the Tar Heels. Good sign for Carolina, though. Pineda up and walking off the field under his own power. Tar Heels can't really afford to lose any of their key players. Already down one player coming into the season in Giovanni Montes de Aca. That was a big loss for the Tar Heels. He was looking to be a real threat. Really had a breakout season last year for the Heels. Led the team in goals scored. Lost just before the season started, though, to a season-ending knee injury. It looks like they're going to take Pineda back into the locker room. We'll have to keep an eye on that one. Never the best of signs if that's the case. Hopefully he'll be all right, though. Big Offside side. flag up. about 10 minutes going here in this second half. Carolina has dominated possession. Five shots taken. 
Knights still though down by just one. Just takes one moment to change the game completely though. That's why you always have to be alert as a player. Every moment counts, you can't take plays off and that's for any sport, especially soccer. Knight's gonna reverse field, bring it to the near side. That pressure from Carolina though has caused problems as far as working it up through the midfield. Gunny Sorkin not having as much space as he would like. Salas able to get ahead on that one, but Mendoza with a head of steam gathered it in. Touch off the mark. Good step by Sorkin again. Hatsabu near side. Mendoza trying to get it back to him. Great read there from Salas to take possession away. Dean looking to play a ball into space. Malone will just play that one out of bounds far sideline. That'll give the Knights an opportunity to get a couple of subs in and a huge one, Cal Jennings, back into the game for UCF. It does seem to be okay though, injury not the case. Louis Perez, the other one, back into the game. So the two big threats up top for the Knights. See if it'll change the dynamic for the UCF Knights. Knights looking to reverse field. Salas with another really good read on the ball. Looking to spring Herrera loose. Jimenez, I believe, right? Jimen uh, Jimenez, excuse me. Yeah. Another foul there. That's just the fourth against Carolina, though. It has been a, a pretty physical match, and you've seen a lot of the physicality by UCF, 13 fouls, and that was a trend that happened in the game against Wake Forest as well. Yeah, there's the saying that either the man or the ball. So if, if the ball goes past you, you can't allow the man to come past you too. 19 fouls committed by the Knights in that loss to Wake Forest, two to one Friday night. Gahan ahead to Herrera. He's going to be fouled just before midfield. And fouling higher up the field if you're the defensive team allows you to slow down the game or slow down their counterattack as well. Whereas if you foul near your box, it could be a potential yellow or red or a dangerous play for the other team, dangerous opportunity for the other team. Looks like they've got Mauricio Pineda back out of the locker room and doing some drills over on the sideline to test that knee out. A couple of subs are ready to come in for Carlos Samuano's team. As that one's going to be last touched by a Tar Heel. Got to be a good sign to see him back out there and testing the knee at least. Definitely. It means he's been checked in the back. And clear through some tests. Good defending again from Salas. Both Herrera and Atabu trying to attack this near side. Salas has been up to the task every time so far. It was a good step by Kelly on the far side trying to spring the counter attack. And after that initial flurry from the Tar Heels, the first couple of minutes of this half, things have slowed down. Late tackle there by Martin Salas. I was just thinking, must be pretty special to share the field with your brother, Martin and Mark Salas, both playing for Carolina. It's a big accomplishment for the family. 
You know the parents have got to be happy they're not on opposite teams exactly. where the dad wears one shirt and the mom has to wear another I've one. Seen, I've seen that happen. <laughs> you don't know who to cheer for. We actually talked about it uh, right before air. Your teammate, James Pyle, had a brother that played at South Carolina. That's right. And they didn't know who to cheer for. <laughs> That's when you just cheer for Carolina. So you do a coin, yeah. <laughs> oh, you do that. You do a coin toss. Those conversations back home after the games must be a lot of fun. If you're on the winning it's end. Just, as long as you're <laughs> the one who wins, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> Perez sends the ball down into the corner. Fortunate deflection there. Goal kick. That'll allow the Tar Heels to get both of their subs into the game. Del Rosario and Rose checking back in. Rose, the goal scorer for the Tar Heels. Let's see if you can keep that form up. Jeremy DeLalo, freshman out of Canada, checks into the game. Jelly plays this one back to Hernandez. Good ball movement by the Knights so far. Some good short passing here from UCF. has gotten them down to the top of the 18. <laughs> Martin Salas comes in late there. Be an opportunity to whip that ball in again for the UCF Knights. Probably looking for Cal Jennings, at the back post. Jelly just a couple of yards out of the box, taken down. See Martin just late there. Ends up kicking Jelly. Looks like Tar Heel's gonna go with a four-man wall. Smear directing some traffic. So Orkin sends it towards the back post. Player making a run, ball loose, rebound, put in the back of the net. UCF has tied this one up. There we go, dangerous opportunity for the UCF Knights. They capitalize at that back post. And I believe that was Gianluca Arcangeli who scored the goal. He has his second on the season. Yeah, he initially runs to the back post. Loses his man, hits it towards Alex Samir, deflects back towards him, and his momentum carries the ball back into the goal, 1-1. Scored the lone goal in the loss on Friday night for the Knights. And has tied it up. Just about 27 minutes remaining in this one. First shot of this second half for the Knights. Tar Heels looking for an answer quickly. Peters with a cross attempt. We'll definitely change the dynamic of the game now. One moment's all it takes. 1-1. One, one. Palalo gives that one away to Skahan. Tried to beat a defender. Mendoza able to take it away. Mark Salas taking his time on the throw in here. Gets it into Constant. Soft touch there from Constant. Nearly gave it away to the Knights. Instead, he'll play it back to Smear. Ten shots in the game for the Knights. Nine for the Tar Heels. These substitutions for the Knights seem to have made an impact. Getting better control of the game right now. Rosario and Rose giving chase. Good news for Carolina fans. Pineda ready to check back into the game. Another foul will go against UCF. This one at midfield. 15th of the game. This is 
Martin Salas ready to play the free kick for the Tar Heels. Senior out of Dallas, Texas. Constant to Scahan. Immediately blocked off. He'll play it back to Constant. Angeli putting some pressure. Here comes Pineda back into the game. He'll replace Salas. It seems like Brohalter is coming into the game for Jelani Peters as well. Perhaps a change in formation. Or he's playing left wing. Which seems to be the case. And a rose, Tar Heels gonna switch field. Berhalter serves one in. Header, Rose to the back post. Huttel able to get to it. Good direction again from Rose. He heads it back across the goalkeeper. Not enough power though to put in the back of the net. First opportunity for Carolina in about 12 minutes of action. Jelly going to settle that one down and win possession for the Knights. Let's go by Perez there to chop it and find the switch. Stroke and serve that one at the top of the 18. Schmalbach just couldn't get up and get to it. And the foul going to go against the Knights. Carolina took the lead in the first half thanks to Alex Rose just a few minutes ago. Gianluca Arcangeli tied it up though for UCF. A little too aggressive on that ball in the air by Arcangeli. This one deep enough in night territory, the Tar Heels can put some numbers forward if they choose. <laughs> Kelly to Pineda. He'll turn on it. Del Rosario pushed off the ball by Dean. Kelly tripped up and there's another foul and a free kick coming for the Heels. Kelly gets there first, gets a toe poke. Perez has to commit a foul. Let's see it. Yep. Just gets there first. Perez a bit frustrated. Another opportunity for Carolina. Whip that ball in. Kelly and the freshman Burhalter. Over the ball. Kelly gonna peel off. It'll be Burhalter, the freshman, to take the free kick. Low drive immediately sent out by the night defense. Salas plays it into space. Skahan giving chase. Keeper was there as well. Good job by the defender to slow Skahan up just a hair. Just puts his body in front so Skahan can't get through to the ball. They call and the Rosa goes down on his own somehow. Whistle against Carolina there. A little bit of a late call from the ref. I think he just tripped. Yeah. From that angle, maybe the referee thought there was some contact from Del Rosario. Maybe the slightest contact, but...
Mendoza down in space. Delalo with the cross. And Jelly got to it, but couldn't get a good touch on it. Smear will roll it out to Pineda. And Jelly has really made an impact in this game. Just played two minutes off the bench in the first half. Has a goal here in the second half and has had a couple other good looks. Final game of the Carolina Nike Classic. Tar Heels took on the Creighton Blue Jays Friday night in their first game. Drew a 2-2 tie. It was 2-0 at halftime. Tar Heels really poured it on in the second half. And eventually both teams, Alex, just ran out of gas. First game of the season, they had to play 110 and... There was just nothing left in the tank once they got to the extra 20. It's not easy when you got to go to extra time in regular season games. Usually that's reserved for, you know, playoff games, but it, it definitely takes a toll on your body. You don't want to concede that goal, too, because in college soccer, when you, when you do concede, the game's over. It's golden goal. So the stakes are almost, you know, higher. Mm -hmm. You don't have time to win that, get that goal back if you do concede in extra time. Tar Heels really putting some pressure on. They force the turnover. Del Rosario is Scahan. Defense just able to knock that one away. Good slide tackle there by Hernandez. I believe it was Rose once again that won that ball back. He's had some very good pressing up top. And that will work back towards the middle of the field. I was just going to say that that's key. If you have your forward who's leading the line and pressing well, that, that gives off energy and is contagious for the rest of the team. Defending isn't just for defenders and attacking isn't just for attackers, right? That's what all coaches hope. That's what all coaches hope. <laughs> but if your front line can press and win the ball back, that, that makes life difficult for, for their the opposition's back line. They won't feel as comfortable playing out of the back. And that gives you confidence as a defender myself that I know if, if my forward's going to press, then I can maybe step a little higher. It's the snowball effect. One person does something and it allows another player. Exactly. It's all connected. Nice ball there from Aguilera. Silas Rose. Couldn't quite redirect that one. Got it on frame, but right into the hands of Uttel. What a ball by Bill Halter there. Rose, Alex Rose just couldn't get the right connection there for the header to put the Tar Heels up 2-1. Great ball by Bill Halter, though, the freshman. Seems to have very clean technique and crossing skills. Arcangeli to Perez. Learman ahead. Perez left footed pass. Top of the 18. Looking for the last pass and just losing his footing there was Delalo. Take another look at that last set, well, last piece from Carolina. Rose able to get the header on frame. Again, good work by Bill Halter. He sees Rose, finds him. Not the greatest of connection by Alex Rose. He'll be disappointed in that. He can definitely he do better a, there. Just a little early. Just a little early, yeah. His timing was off. A taboo back on for the Knights. Vicious effort there by number six, Learman. We'll give the Tar Heels an opportunity to get Jelani Peters back onto the pitch. Do you see players sometimes taking an ill-advised shot from distance like that because maybe they get a little frustrated by the defense? Yeah, but also if you're a defender, that, that's your claim to fame, right? That's a good feeling right yeah, there. <laughs> you either score a worldie from 35, 40 yards out or you score, score a header. 
A little push in the back is going to give Carolina the ball across midfield. Knights have now committed 20 fouls in this game. Kelly back towards the far sideline. Peters, little hesitation. Pineda now. Jennings with some real good pressure. Smear just got it away. Nice volley there by Del Rosario over the head of the defense. Scahan in the box. Can't get the shot off the first time. Second one pushed aside. Del Rosario stumbles. Plays it wide for Peters. No shot from Peters, and it's cleared away by the Knights. Big time save by Uttel. Good skill by Salas there. Crosses that one back post. Good read. Cross too much. What a ball by Lucas Del Rosario to put Jack Scahan through. He sees that Jack Scahan's the one running through. He knows he's got pace. Puts him straight through. Jack Scahan takes a good touch. Very good defending by the UCF. I'm not sure who it was who, who tracked back there, but that's not it's not easy to keep up with a with a through ball into Jack Scahan. Perez looking to get that one far side for Atabu. Salas with, with eyes up the field looking for Rose. Pass a little bit off the mark and Learman heads it to the far sideline. There's a turnover right to Aguilera. Pineda with some space. Going to play it far side for Peters. Good defense there from Dean. And he'll just shield that one out of bounds for a goal kick. Really good defending by Dean there. 1v1. Cameron Fisher going to come back on. Replace Del Rosario. Sixteen minutes of action for Fisher so far in this one. Carlos not going as deep into the bench as he did on Friday night. Just five players. But he's used a good rotation of those to try and keep everybody fresh. Jennings is going to go down. Late whistle coming in from behind the play. Yellow card. One going to be issued to Matt Constant. Ball comes through here, flicks it on. Matt Constant's on the wrong side of Cal Jennings. Has to commit the foul or else he's through. That's the yellow card for him. First of the night. Two Tar Heel defenders now playing with a yellow card. Matt Constant as well as Blake Malone. Both center backs. Huge opportunity here for the Knights. Yoni Sorokin will take this free kick. Four-man wall for the Tar Heels set up just outside of the 18. Jennings at the bottom of that. Ball played in for Jennings. Beautiful piece there from UCF, and the Knights take the 2-1 lead. Excellent set piece by UCF Knights. Definitely work on that in the training ground. Take a look. You can see Cal Jennings just pulls off the wall. He initially starts there. Take a look. You see him right there in the left-hand side. He pulls off and then he finds the back of the net on the right side. Great ball too. Just an overall great play by the UCF Knights. For the Knights, the first time they have had a lead this season. First goal of the year for Jennings, who was second in the NCAA last year with 20 goals scored on the season. 
Hernandez down right in front of the UCF bench on the far side. The execution there was excellent, though, from the UCF Knights. That's that's not that's not easy to pull off because if someone messes up the initial pass, watch number eight pulls it to Perez. Perez looks for Jennings. Everything has to go perfectly there, and and it did. Even had Hernandez peel off left side, which pulled Salas a little bit away from the wall. It was very smart. I think Barcelona pulled that off in the Champions League final in 2011 once, but... Well, don't quote me on it. <laughs> I've seen it before. Skahan with a cross. Rose making a run, but right into the body of Utel. Because typically when you're in the wall, Cal Jennings was in the wall, and then nobody will pick you up if you just breach off the wall right behind the, right behind the wall, and that's what he did. Onside as well. Perez and Sorokin credited with assists on that goal. Tar Heels have to fight their way back once again. They were able to do it Friday night. They were down 2 nothing to Creighton before they eventually finished a 2-2 draw. Find themselves down here with just over 11 minutes remaining. Perez looking to get Jennings loose again. We'll see as they push for that equalizer, the game will start to open up more. UCF might be able to take advantage and get a third on a counterattack. Gideon Adu Pepra into the game on defense. Sophomore out of Newcastle, England. 15 for the Knights, first time he's been in the game. Here's Peters for the Tar Heels with the cross on the ground. And that is going to be sent out. There was only Alex Rose, though, in the box. We need to have more runners in the box when, when, when you have an opportunity like that. Ball into space. Schmalbach uh, gathers it in. Into the 18. Around Salas, right-footed shot. Jennings actually got in the way of that one. Skahan battling with Mendoza. Mendoza wins it, but will be whistled for the foul. Unfortunate there for UCF. Shot taken, but their own player in the box gets in the way of it. Jennings. It looks like Perez down near side. How much of this might just be trying to catch a breather? Both teams playing Friday night. You come back. You're getting towards the last 10 minutes. We're in new, now the last 10 minutes of this one. Absolutely. If you're up 2-1, especially, you're more inclined to go down, take your time so your team can reset, slow the game down, make sure that the Tar Heels do not get any momentum. Willa Lobos already on to the pitch for UCF. <laughs> Haven't seen anybody go off for the night, so I'm assuming that they're going to sub out Perez. I'm going to make him go off near side here just so we can get things back underway. All right, Alex, you've been in the timeouts. You've been in the locker room. Ten minutes to go. What is Carlos telling his team? What is he telling the offense? How do you get that equalizer? Well, you need to push numbers forward, that's for sure, to create more chances. So you, you might even see a, a, a back three. You might see Jeremy Kelly pushing forward a lot more. But you also need to make sure that you do a good job of, of cutting out their counterattacks because that's how you create more opportunities for yourself. If you allow them to get out on the counter when, when you're when you're the team that's attacking, then then that the, then they'll be able to get a a third goal. One of the possible answers is a fresh sub, the junior Taff Wada from England, getting ready to come in for the Tar Heels. There's going to be a foul. Cameron Fisher went up to play the ball. Coming in over the top. 
is Adu Pepra. Seemed like a head to head there. Scaham will line up for the free kick. Three man wall going to be set up here by the Knights. Gahan plays it back corner header right on frame. Couple of Tar Heels making a run towards the back post. Alex Rose was looking for it, waiting for somebody to serve him one. Once again, finding that option of constant back post. Trying to get a runner for the knockdown. Little Lobos working against Aguilera. Aguilera going to win that ball, but Pineda sends it into space. Delalo to the middle of the field. Alex Rose takes it for the heels. Peters pushed off it and fouled. That was Sorokin, who was... Whistled for the foul. He's got a yellow card as well. He's got to be a little bit careful there in the midfield. Skahan going to switch fields looking for Peters. That is the case when you're on the yellow card. Naturally, you have to play a bit more cautiously. Pineda trying to find Skahan. His defense able to thwart that attack as Jennings will get it up towards midfield. imagine if you're U UCF at this point you're not taking the foot off the gas pedal but you're looking to play a very possession oriented game as the offside flag goes up against Jennings game plan with seven minutes left is definitely to kill the game keep as much possession as you can but also not take any risks delay any any sort of attacking threat that the Tar Heels create Freshman Tathwada. Junior from Brackenell, England. Played 11 minutes in the game Friday for North Carolina, getting one shot off. Couldn't win that one back at midfield. It'll stay with the Knights. It'll be a throw in as the clock is under six minutes to go here in Chapel Hill. Both teams looking for their first win on the season. Carolina had the one nothing lead at halftime thanks to Alex Rose, but the second half has been all Knights. Currently with the one goal lead. Dean loses that one in some traffic. Pineda looking to play a near side. Skahan couldn't find himself some separation. Looks like Del Rosario ready to come back in for North Carolina. Ball a little under hit there. Go straight to the keeper, Otto. Good ball out of the back, broke. Carolina's initial line of pressure. Mendoza back to Villa Lobos. He's onside. Top of the 18, first shot deflected. Still juggling it. Schmalbach couldn't quite keep that one in bounds. It'll be a goal kick for the Tar Heels. 
Two subs coming in for Carolina. Berhalter and Del Rosario back on. Aguilera going off as well as Malone, so a little bit more offense into the lineup here for Carlos's team. Yeah, this looks like a back three to me. Let's see where Mark Salas goes. Just about four minutes for the Tar Heels to try and find the equalizer. It looks like Jack Scahan is playing right back slash wing back. Too much pace for Del Rosario on that one. It looks like the Tar Heels have changed 3-3-4 formation here. Del Rosario, Rose, Peters, and Wada up top. Goal kick comes out to Mendoza. Skahan trying to play it near side. Del Rosario able to keep that one in. Nice defense by Mendoza, and he'll win it back. It was a crucial tackle by Mendoza. Jack Skahan was through. Lalo into the box looking for Jennings. Salas with enough of a deke to get some separation, but then will lose the ball. Jennings whistled for the foul, and Salas reaching for the right leg. Let's take a look. Mark Salas cuts the ball back. Jennings gets him and a little bit of the ball. Foul, North Carolina. Smear will get it back in across midfield. Just a couple more minutes to go. Tar Heels going to have to take some chances here and leave themselves open on the back end, but two and a half to try and find the equalizer. Wada's pass trying to make it through does not find its mark. To gather it back. Ball from Furholter through, but nobody able to connect on the other end. I think he was trying to find Mauricio Pineda through there. Just a little bit off target. Peters able to settle this one at midfield. Kelly for Pineda. One touch to Peters. Peters gets that one to Rose. A little bit turned around, tries to play live for Del Rosario, and he's not going to be able to get to that one in time. Play did look promising. Take a look, Mauricio. Good layoff for Jelani Peters. Plays it through to Rose. Gets cut out by the UCF Knight defense. But then overhits it to Lucas Del Rosario out of bounds. Goal kick. Sorry, you can't settle that one. About a minute to go. CF hoping to hold on for their first win against Carolina since 1986. Berhalter with eyes on the field looking for somebody over the top. Plays it wide for Peters. Excuse me, that is Tap. Tapped Wada through a couple of defenders. Has it taken away by Dean, though. 30 seconds to go. Silas to Constant. Final push for Carolina. Can they find an equalizer? Peters keeps it in bounds. Ball loose. Uptail able to get to it just before Peters. He can take his time. And that will seal the deal. A come from behind win for UCF. Their first win of the season. And it was two second half goals that got the victory for them. Big win for the UCF Knights at the expense of the UNC Tar Heels at home. Well done by the UCF Knights in their execution. Closed out the game very well. We're very strong defensively. And they execute on their game plan. Kyle Jennings, the, the difference maker. 
Jennings.